Do you ever lie to these people on tours? Oh, I would, I would I would like create a whole false uh, identity for myself. Wow. I had one of my things I was doing was I was wearing a fake wedding ring uh, it was like an engagement ring that my mom had as like a piece of <laughs> costume jewelry and I'd be like I just can't wait for my Christmas wedding and I would talk about my boyfriend <laughs> yeah <laughs> it didn't exist just playing a role for no reason yeah just to make uh. it keep it interesting because then it would make me focus because I have to remember like what I said and what I did not I had a whole thing and then I was kind of experimenting if saying I was pregnant if I would get more tips that way being like I hope I'm not starting to show early on yeah. Wow. Yeah. I love that shit. I love that shit. I'm here for that. I want that smoke. I love that shit. <laughs> I'm here for that. I want that smoke. <laughs> Welcome to Ari Shafir Skeptic Tech Podcast. My name is Ari Shafir, everybody. And today on the podcast, Katie Hannigan is coming on. Uh, to tell me about her time as a tour guide in New York. She's here to promote her new special, Feeling of Emptiness. Uh, it's a CD, it's a comedy album that you can get right now on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, uh, iTunes, wherever. The best way to show support for any comedian on this podcast is to support the project they're doing. So why not go and fucking listen if you don't have the money to buy it? Um, then go and get on Spotify and listen to it and then reach out to Katie and tell her how much you liked it. Tell her how much it made your fucking drive to work a little bit better. You were going to kill yourself today, and after a couple laughs from Katie Hannigan, you're like, you know what? I'm going to hold off one more week. I'm going to wait for my kid to graduate from kindergarten, and then I'm going to do it because I don't want to disrupt the entire kindergarten class having fucking Samantha uh, mourn for her father's loss. I'm going to wait till the end of the fucking school year. And that's because of Katie Hannigan's new album, Feeling of Emptiness. Uh, if you can buy it, obviously buy it. Uh, support the comedians that way you guys get it you're always supportive of comedians i have a good fan base for that um real quick I i'm just gonna start this it's not gonna be a long fucking uh uh intro let me do my dates real quick uh nashville st louis buffalo louisville jacksonville kansas city austin new york minneapolis and chicago from 4 20 until uh june 18th tickets are at ari shafir.com right now no more ari the great just ari shafir.com um I did go to the comedy store's 50th anniversary birthday party. And what a fucking special treat it was. It was fun to have it back there. It really was fun to be back there. The cool thing was I was hoping for like an old timer fight. I was hoping for like two comics from the late 70s to fucking have it out. And I didn't get that. But there were some sloppy fucking drunks. Nobody knows how to pace themselves anymore in this world. Everyone for COVID, everyone forgot what it's like to fucking sip on beer, sip on beers, and it got sloppy. Me and Simone, um, Jason Lucas, and Guy Tory went upstairs uh, to smoke a cigar on the roof. When we came back down, I mean, the thing started at 7, that was probably like 10 o'clock. When we came back down, it was a different party. Everybody was fucking wrecked. <laughs> Just screaming at each other, nonsense. I mean, they weren't even making sense. It was great. You ever see a complete drunk, like a lunatic, out of their mind drunk, and want to be like, and they're like, can I just talk to you for that? And you start talking to them, and then you realize, like, not only are you annoying, then you do that for a while. You're like, ugh, you're annoying. This drunk's annoying me. And then at some point, you realize, like, well, I have my own life. And then it hits you. You're not going to remember this at all. You're blackout. So you can just literally walk away. You don't have to say, like, oh, excuse me one second. You don't have to do that. You just walk away, and they'll move on to the next guy. There were a bunch of people bringing up shit that they had never moved on past. Apparently, <laughs> my autism doesn't allow me to smile when I make jokes. And some people were like, you said this thing to me a long time ago. I never forgot it. And I'm like, oh, I mean, it was ridiculous. I was definitely joking. They're like, you weren't. I'm like, 
I was mad at you for using a Yiddish word. You, you sure it wasn't just a joke? Like joke mad? <laughs> it was so funny, dude. You see people have their pent up shit that they haven't let go. And then when it comes out, you realize how dumb it is. You ever be angry at somebody and then like, as you say, like, you know, a long time ago, you <laughs> brought me up with the wrong introduction. Or like, I was at a party and, and I just stood there for like 20 seconds while you talked to a friend, you didn't even introduce me. And like, as you say it, you're like, yeah, why? that was 20 years ago and I'm still upset that you didn't introduce me. Let's start the episode. Three recommendations for movies if you've never seen them. I just have like a good streak going. Licorice Pizza was great. Uh, worst person in the world. I'm sorry, the worst woman in the world. Might be the worst person in the world. Or a Norwegian film. And then uh, everything, everywhere, all at once. Fucking blew me away. Don't even look it up. I had knew nothing about it. Don't even look it up. Just go to the movie theater and see everything, everywhere, all at once. Or Licorice Pizza. Or Worst Woman in the World. They're all fucking great. Um, let's start the episode. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go on a guide through tour guides of New York City. Katie Hannigan comes on to tell us all about what it's like to lead people on these tours of New York. Ari Shavir Skeptic, episode 465 or something. Uh, and don't forget my comedy special, uh, Ari Shafir Jew, is being recorded June 11th and 12th in Brooklyn, New York. That's right. Tickets are available right now at AriShafir.com. Um, Ari Shafir Jew. If you've seen it, you don't have to come. It'll be the same hour. If you've not seen Ari Shafir Jew, get your plane tickets. Come on out. Let's have a fucking blast. Saturday, Sunday, June 11th and 12th in Brooklyn, New York. Um, all right. Ari Shafir Skeptic, episode 466, 7, 7. Guide me to hell. Not bad. With Katie Hannigan. Starts now. We're starting. I asked you... So you, I don't know if you know the podcast. There's so many, but like it's a topic. I do a topic every week. Yeah. So, with some with some level of expertise about whatever. Mm -hmm. East Village, I'd be an expert. Yeah, you know? yeah. You know, um, not like I don't know the history of it, but enough to be like, you know, more than the lady. You know where stuff is. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, you'd be an expert on relationships. I'm know? in one. I'm in You're a. In one. I'm that's, an that's, expert that's on one much, relationship. Right, exactly. <laughs> that's as much as it is. So then, like. You ask people like, well, what what have you gotten into? What are your hobbies? Or mm -hmm. like, what have you used to be into? Jobs, mm -hmm. shit like that. And people always go like, oh, I don't know, maybe this. And then you're like, I just figured it out recently. Um, so then I asked Mike, I'm like, hey, what's Katie? <laughs> no one gives me the right answers. <laughs> so like, what's Katie been into in the past? Yeah. And then he gave me the answers that you did not give me. <laughs> oh, well, because I had talked with him about it. I was like, what should I do for Ari's podcast? He was like tour guiding. I was like, oh, right. But I did used to have a podcast about apocalypses. Oh. So that's why I had suggested that because I was like, oh, that's that's kind of like a niche that I'm into. That could also be a thing. Yeah. If you're like way into something. Yeah. Like I did one about conspiracy theories. I've done a couple of those with oh, people nice. that are way yeah, into yeah. it. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was very into apocalypses. I, I still am. And the, the podcast was called Apodcalypse. It was a pun. Nice. A pun calypse. Nice. But, um, Gotta love those. Yeah, I, I, I was, I did do a lot of research on it. And it was pretty, it was pretty cool, I think. But. You know what we need for podcast worlds? A fucking, like the, the BBC model. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, hey, I'm gonna do this. It's gonna be 12 episodes, and then it'll be over. Yes, that's what I did. I did 30 episodes, one season. I never brought it back. Yeah. But I did it with Becky actually at her old apartment that she had oh, turned nice. it into a podcast studio. It was very oh, cool. cool. Yeah. Um. Oh, nice. Yeah. It's just like, but they gotta get them going. Sitcoms don't have that. Yeah. It's it's, it's like they're impossible. launched as big as they'll be. Yeah. It's impossible to like build when you do like a niche podcast like that where it's like it's so much research it's a huge like it was Too a big production I couldn't sustain it and, and then, then at I was some like, point also you run out of research yeah like I can't do this every week I had no ads I was spending I was spending yeah. 10 hours just on like the research not even like oh I was like writing little segments for it but it, it was cool and it's now gone so no one it's can check it up. out I took it down why because I was like, I'm just throwing money into this Libsyn account every month. Oh, and right. it's like, what's the point, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Also, like, I'm legit considering, like, taking everything down off YouTube and then just, like, leaving my last five episodes up. Yeah. With the way the zeitgeist moves from... So, like, you ever see a comic do, like, a joke where you're like, hey, that reference is dated. 
Yes. Or like, like yes. uh, I saw like a cruise ship comic. He used to be at the store and he, he talked about like Blink-182 and he called them a punk band. And it's like, oh, uh, you don't really know what they are. Yeah. Um, or like you'll do a joke about there's no black skateboarders like once, but now right, there's tons. Right. So it just doesn't quite work anymore. Yeah. But we've moved from like this doesn't make sense to you're evil. Yeah. <laughs> you know, in the yeah. time where it was fine. So it was like, what's the point of even having an old one up? I am not a fan of just having everything you've ever done on the internet. I feel like totally curate it. I have like old sets curated, that have on yeah. been on there for years and like for whatever reason, like I signed something because I got like seventy five dollars and I was like, This is fucking great and yeah. then now I just have like this set where I'm like, um <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Some like, shitty old set. Exactly. It's I wanna go back good. on my Instagram and just delete everything that's not interesting. Yes, yes. Every plate of cheese. <laughs> <laughs> you remember the beginning? We were like, I don't know, food? Yeah. That'll be some content. When I first started using Instagram, I wasn't, I mean, it was different then than what it is now, where it was just like, I guess I'm taking a picture of a guy, a sad man I saw holding a balloon. Is this content? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it was always like the easiest version of art. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Plus with the filters, it was yeah. like, this seems high level. <laughs> Am I a genius? <laughs> and then the internet would be like, you're not. Yeah. Um, before we get any further, excited to announce your first first comedy album. Yes, thank you. Yeah, that's big news, man. Yes, it's called a feeling, or it's called feeling of emptiness, and um, nice it, bleak. Yes, it's very bleak, and it has a few different meanings, and it's available on my website, katiehannigan.com slash album. It's also available wherever you can get an album, wherever you could stream it. But I would really prefer if people buy it directly from me. Uh, so, so Spotify and shit like that for the poverty. Struggle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I will have a mixture of fans who will be like, "I'll slide you five bucks, ten bucks, yes. whatever it is. How much is it? It's ten. Thirty. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm worth it. Com slash what slash album? Yes. Katie Hannigan, two ends. Yes. Uh, three total. Three total. <laughs> dot com slash album. Um, um, yeah, but I'll have some people like, "Yeah, I'll slide you some," and other people like, "There's zero chance of that." Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I get it. I yeah. do I do it with other stuff too where it's like if I um love a comic but, you know, I'm I'm short on cash that week then I'll just wait until they put it out on YouTube or something. Mm-hmm. I've totally mm-hmm. done that. Yeah, I've done that too with like street dancers where oh. it's like don't have the money. And then yeah. other times I just like got a good paycheck. I'm like you're getting $5. Yeah, well, I can never afford to give street dancers money, but I always watch and I make eye contact and good I job. do a supportive gaze. <laughs> a supportive gaze? <laughs> yeah. Pass yeah. out a brochure for knee surgery. <laughs> well, it's exciting news. It really Thank is. Thank you. The first album is like a real first step. Yes, yeah. How long have you been doing stand-up? 12 years. Yeah, yeah, so it's, I feel like... You were about to do it at 10 years, which is kind of when I did mine. Yeah, I was about to do it then, and I'm glad, I'm actually glad that I had the two years to wait, and, you know, I guess I did it, uh, I'd now done it six months ago, so, it, but it was good to just take the time to really focus on doing the album and doing road work for the album and not doing it like I was right before the pandemic where Smart. I was just trying not to bomb, you know? Smart, yeah, so. yeah, if you really work it, it, like, gets a lot better. Yeah. All of them, sorry. I'm focusing on stupid video instead of audio. Um, <laughs> um, all right, let's get to the top. But for sure, we'll talk about it again, but for sure, fucking solid job, great. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Legit, that's really exciting. really appreciate it. It's your first release. It's a big one. Yeah. How long was the album? It is 51 minutes. Great. Yeah, so it's right there. Yeah. Hi, guys. Here's me at a fucking uh, uh, coffee shop today. Open up my laptop and porn. <laughs> How do you stop it? How do you stop it? Everyone turns to look. You got to close it. But also, you got to use your laptop. So, like, I guess in hindsight, I should take my laptop to the bathroom, open it up there, and stop it. But, I mean, if I'm in the bathroom and porn starts playing, it's a single seater at this coffee shop. What are the odds I don't masturbate? Low. I'd say they were low. And if they're low odds, then it's like, I'm going to be the guy that starts masturbating all the time in a in a coffee shop bathroom. Do I want to be that guy? Maybe I do. But it's something like I'm going to have to think about for the future. You know, it's not something you can rush into. It's like getting pregnant. You don't start thinking, do I want a baby once you're pregnant? Your hormones are fucking you up. No, you want to make that decision ahead of time. If I get pregnant, I'm going to kill this thing in a, a, a an ancient tradition called abortion. Or I'm going to keep it 
and give nothing back to the world and overpopulate an already overcrowded world uh, because I want to be able to raise. Dude, I trolled a nice fucking <laughs> bunch of moms the other day. You just point out how all medical science has shown that happiness goes down after you have children. And they go, well, I'm happy. I saw my kid roll over the other day. It's the dumbest reasons I always give you. It's fucking retarded. It's the dumbest reasons in the world. I, uh, my child smiled and I, everything was okay. And I'm like, oh, that's why you gave up your career? That's why you've never hung out with your friends? That's why everybody went camping and you can't do it because you got to watch your kid? Oh, no, no. Seeing your kid roll over is great. So that's it for you. You you have your purpose then. Your purpose was to have offspring and their purpose is to also have offspring? You're going to raise your child for the purpose of having offspring? Wow, way to be an ain't in the hive. Guys, my, my tour is back. I'm doing stand-up comedy all the time. You're going to love it. Um... Uh, big news, I'm recording a special June 11th and 12th in Brooklyn, New York. Go to AriShafir.com to get tickets, but all these shows, you can go to AriShafir.com for tickets. Nashville, we're doing a storytelling show at the Ryman Auditorium on 420. That's right, April 20th, known as a holiday um, for, you know, wait, what was it a holiday for? Fuck, I knew I knew it. That's in there somewhere. Uh, 420, storytelling show, Sal Volcano, Shane Gillis. Nate Bargatze, and the one and only Big J Okerson, and myself. Uh, get tickets right now, 420 at the Ryman Auditorium. It's the biggest place we've ever done the storytelling show. This is still happening. That's what Shane wants me to rename it. And then after that, all these shows will be Ari Shafir Jew getting ready for my special, Ari Shafir Jew, Brooklyn, New York, on June 11th and 12th. St. Louis, Michigan? That seems wrong. St. Louis, Cincinnati. St. Louis, Kansas. Missouri, St. Louis, Missouri, um, April 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. Buffalo, New York. I knew that one was New York. Um, April 28th through the 30th, Mike Cannon will be with me. You know him. He's been on this podcast before uh, in St. Louis. And Reggie Conquest, uh, whose ass you've seen on, uh, on an HBO show. Fucking. He's pounding his fucking fat ass into this fucking chick. Uh, in Buffalo. April 28th, 29th, and 30th. Then Louisville, I'll bring Caitlin Palufo. Uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Worst possible week to go, Kentucky Derby Week, so get tickets. Uh, do something other than those fucking Illuminati slash rednecks. Um, May 5th, 6th, 7th. Jacksonville, Mississippi. That seems wrong. Jacksonville, New York. Nope. Jacksonville, Florida. Adrian Appalucci will be open for me. The Dark Queen. You've seen her on this podcast a couple times. Uh, May 12th, 13th, and 14th. Followed by Kansas City. I'll bring, um, who am I bringing? Who am I bringing to Kansas City? Somebody who's been on this podcast. Anthony DeVito. He was just on a few weeks ago. Uh, coming to Kansas City with me, May 20th, 21st. Austin, Texas, the entire week. I'm doing a residency at the Creek of the Cave. The final week of May, uh, the 24th through the 29th. I'll be doing Kill Tony on the 23rd. And then 24th to the 29th. In Austin, the Creek in the Cave. Get tickets now at AriShafir.com. And then that's it. June 10th and 11th will be the final showings of Jew ever in the history of the world. June 10th, sorry, June 11th and 12th in New York City. If those sell out, maybe I'll add it June 10th. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But June 11th and 12th. Uh, and then I'm dropping Jew the following weeks after that. Minneapolis, June 17th. Chicago at the Vic Theater, June 18th. Uh, that's by next hour. Um, tickets are at arishavir.com. It's fucking great. Guys, come out. Have a good time. Have some laughs. Get fucked up. Enjoy your fucking lives. COVID's over. Let's wait for the next thing to tear our fucking country apart. I'm Ari Shafir, and escape with my comedy. Let's get back to the episode. It's crazy doing an album, though, where I'm like, man, I have so much. I have so many B and C jokes. I have oh, yeah. so much. I have so much garbage that when I've just been keeping them. on my computer on my hard drive now for 10 years. You hear I'm like, them and then you're just like, That's, oh. there's nothing worth. Why, like, why am I doing these on stage? And you get laughs from like finesse. Oh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. When it's recorded, it's like. Bleh. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's. I guess we can do Apocalypse another time. Although, we'll do it a different time. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Because now that makes more sense. I thought it was just like, I don't know, I enjoyed this, but you've really researched it. Yes. Ben Glebe had the worst one. He was doing a podcast saying it was called like News of the World. And it was just the entire oh, world's news for the week. Exhausting. So he had like hours and hours of research oh my every God. week. Oh, my God. No. Yeah, no. He's right. 
But I will say, and maybe we'll do the apocalypse one another time, my prediction from examining all the different we did 30 different apocalyptic scenarios in pop culture and in history and my prediction was that the most likely apocalypse would be a pandemic nice which we had one or uh nuclear is always is always there back and now that's back but my third one my third most likely financial collapse so you never know you never know we're in an inflation thing, right? The yeah, inflation thing. But you know, I if, haven't bought anything in the last month, so I don't really, I haven't seen I, it. <laughs> I don't. I'm not noticing that much. But I'm not a person that buys a ton of stuff. So right. I like, I buy like groceries. I haven't noticed anything crazy. Like I almost will go to the grocery store and I get like whatever is on the end cap. I'm like, oh, okay, on sale. Like oh, that's yeah. kind, kind of Meat how I shop. Meat is the best way for that. Yeah. Where it's like, was this, now this? You're like, I just love seeing that difference. I'm like, nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. make it tonight. Make it tonight. <laughs> oh, right. They're always like, <laughs> fry this up yeah. immediately, though. <laughs> um, yeah, I have trouble buying anything. I, I, I have, like, I was wearing some shirt, and it's kind of like this, but, like, nicer. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted a V-neck T-shirt. Mm. And I'm like, I have one, but I don't have any more. And I had to look for that one. Yeah. And then it was like, well, why don't you have it? I'm like, I don't know. I don't have any. And then you're like, I, I just can't even imagine actually buying a three pack of undershirts yeah <laughs> it's yeah like i don't it's know like, what, i either have it or i don't you have to like go by the h&m and consciously be like okay mike actually did a full wardrobe we went down to uniqlo which is great it's and the best he spent like two hours in there and i was kind of helping him a little bit but it was like the first time he had gotten a new wardrobe in like 15 years maybe <laughs> yeah. and now he looks great well he looked great before but. you gotta like redo him yes yeah i have to um leave my mark <laughs> yeah yeah. Um, but all right. But let's talk about this, though. This is the topic we're trying to talk about. Yes. You were a tour guide in New York City. Yes. I was a private New York City tour guide. Well, I first started out, I was doing walking tours, which was pretty cool. And then I transitioned into the private tour guide world, which was a lot more lucrative. Oh. So I would basically, when I started out doing the walking tours, I was working for a company called, I forget, but so it was a great it was a great company but it was all about showing kind of like the hidden um perspectives of new york city so it was like not necessarily like you're hopping on the bus and you're going around and hearing about like this is where they shot sex in the city like this type of walking tour was like they would do the history of street art and they would talk about like it was more of a minority perspective I've of seen new york those. history I've seen people going look at this mural this is the artist yes. about this and and i'll always like well Tell me if you ever are this. I'll pretend to tie my shoes. <laughs> just like get a little freebie. Interloping. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was never worried about that because like my main concern was like uh, European people just in the street in Bushwick. Oh. And where we're like, they were just like, they're on vacation. You're like, this is an active street <laughs> and yeah. you're getting, you're about to be hit. So I would deal with like a lot of people that were just kind of like, you know, but but the my best walking tour I did, I actually did a gospel history tour in Harlem where I was taking people through the story of the Harlem Renaissance and like art and culture and the story of like black music in America basically Um, and I was like actually kind of nervous to do it the woman who owned the company was a black lady and I I said like "Um, is it awkward that I'm like telling the story of Harlem when it she was like listen it's everybody's story first of all and then second of all, it was like, obviously, no one else wanted to start the tour on Sunday at 845 in the morning. And I was the new person, so I had to do it. Also, like, we need someone who's going to be there on time. And that's not part of our. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> but that one was awesome. And then I felt so much better because most of the uh, most of the people on that tour were like Dutch, you know, and they're like, oh, have you uh, lived in Harlem all your life? I'm like, yes, I am a native. Did they view, uh, uh, like, what was it, soul? What would you, what'd you call it? Whatever it was? Uh, the music? Whatever. The gospel music, gospel. yeah. Do they view that as black or American? They view it as um, b- black American. Okay. So, yeah, in terms of the musical context, it's something that has the roots of um, enslaved people. They have their African musical tradition that combined with their religious practice their christian religious practice and that's what according to the tour is the foundation for most american music so gospel music and we went to like a lot of really cool gospel churches greater refuge was my by far my favorite one and i recommend that people like literally just go there if you can get up that early which greater refuge it's a church on um lexington it's like 125th and lex you can just go in on sundays and see the 
the performance is unbelievable and i'm not really like a big music person yeah. but it's like it, it really is like a cool religious experience yeah. um you ever go to the cotton club i have heard of it i've never been that was one thing we talked about on the tour the cotton club mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah i really want to go there yeah I heard quincy jones album mm-hmm. and he was um yeah, it was this whole like thing about the Cotton Club and how it used to be. It made me want to really want to go there. It's yeah. still around though. And no, is it though? Is that the is that like the one only one that's still around? So I feel like that was the one that Robert De Niro bought a restaurant, and it was in that space. Oh really? Oh, maybe it's not. I am. I'm. It's been so long since I've done this tour. I feel like there's a big chance that I could m- m- mash up the historical facts in my mind. Yeah. But um, but we did go around. We started at um, we started at uh, the Thornburg. Uh, oh, sorry, the Schomburg Center. The Schomburg Center. We did um, Strivers Row, and then we would go down. Um, we would go down a, a few of the streets and over by like the Apollo and see where they had like some of the old some of the old uh, jazz clubs. And now it's like an IHOP, you know. But there's yeah. basically there's nothing really left from the jazz era damn except for the apollo the apollo apollo is still, still there, there. you've been yeah. there uh-huh yeah we would go we would go in for the tour i've never seen a performance there but i've been like in the theater i would i mean i used to watch it after saturday Night live right it's so cool yeah and it's just like the sandman and just it rubbing the fit and it was just like i just remember watching but like I, I didn't know any of any of it or yeah no history was just on after saturday Night live yeah but there was clearly like a hundred year or more history before yeah it's oh. it was a burlesque theater. Really? Yes, it was a burlesque theater, and then burlesque got outlawed by Fiorella Laguardia, who was the mayor in the Depression era New York, and then outlawed burlesque. Yeah, I outlawed get burlesque. it because like show tits or not. None of this half uh, fucking I wish feathers. they would outlaw it now. I mean, it's like <laughs> it's you're so funny, bad. but you're sexy. Like, just either do stand up or don't. It's a stand up comedy of porn. <laughs> it's yeah, just like, yeah. you're, it's, and, and I used to always see, like, in LA, they'd be like, a uh, uh, free burlesque show. I'm like, free. So yeah, you, yeah. Don't, you value yourself as little as we value ourselves. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've done a few combo stand up burlesque shows, and it's always like, this feels unfair. It feels like half of us. Half of the people are playing on steroids, and it's these dumb jokes. You ever see a you ever have a professor who makes jokes and everyone laughs, mm-hmm. but it would always bother me because I'm like, it's only because you're you have a captive audience. Yeah, it's not these jokes aren't that funny. Yeah, it's just like we wouldn't expect it from a professor, so we're there. Mm-hmm. Burlesque mm-hmm. is like the same thing when they make jokes, people like laugh, but it's like. This is just funny in between, like us wanting to see you naked. Yeah, but I will say I love the I love like the slow stripping because I always feel like oh I could do that and then I try it at home and I'm like eh, you know just awkwardly <laughs> yeah. taking off my clothes fast. <laughs> and Mike's so. there like hurry up and change. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like, what are you doing? <laughs> you ever did you, ever, did you ever go to one of Chappelle's parties? I did go to one. Box? Yeah, yeah. Not at the box. I went to one recently, post pandemic. The last one over there. The last one. Yeah, and I saw the the ladies dancing. Is that what you're talking about? Some of them yeah. are from the box. Oh, are they? Yeah. The box is so cool. So cool. I never I got to if go. That closed down. I think it's. I don't think it did. I don't think it did. I feel I, like they probably. I remember made so hearing much about money. it and then like wanting to take this like porn star there, this like softcore porn star there, and then like I'm gonna impress her. Mm. Um. Um. But then it was like, oh yeah, you need bottle service. It starts at like four hundred dollars. Yeah. Starts with, and then if anything addition, Ooh. I'm like, oh no, nah, we'll just go to dinner somewhere yeah, normal. Yeah, no, no. It's it was it was such like a place of rich people pretending that they love art. The one the one girl taking all her clothes out of her vagina. I did not. I don't think I saw that. That was at that party. Was it? Yeah. I think I she may comes have... out naked or maybe wearing a shirt, takes that off, and then just like pull. It's you know those. What are those? Those pieces of clothing that you can use as like a hat, scarf, a top, a tube top, or a full dress. Um, you know, like like a stretch. sarong. A sarong, Yeah, maybe? sort of like that, yeah. but they're just like stretchy things. They used to sell mm-hmm. them. They'd be all like that, but she'd like pull out everything and then she'd be fully yes, dressed. Yes, I love incorporating the vagina into your performance. It's important because it is, it's like it's it's a purse. So why not use it? <laughs> women's month. Uh-huh, yeah. It's women's month. <laughs> the kangaroo gender. Yeah. Um, yeah, that. Why do we talk about the box? Um, I think I don't know. I don't know either. Oh, we're talking about the Apollo. We're talking about the Apollo. 
Oh, and burlesque. the Apollo and how yeah. it's so iconic and it, yes it was a burlesque theater and then um, but yeah that was a that was a great tour that I did but it was so such an interesting tour to be like doing as a white lady in Harlem because again the person who owned the tour company uh, was a black woman she wrote all these tours from the perspective of black uh, New Yorkers and it was really cool and it was about like you know giving people who want to take like a tour giving them an opportunity to hear a lesser seen perspective of New York. Meanwhile, I'm a white person leading a group of white people through Harlem. And so like, (laughs) of course there's like tensions at times where like, I remember one time, um, and one of residents from, from the residents, like I'm meeting everybody at the Schomburg center, which is the gorgeous library up on, I think it's 135th. And, um, I was working at the time with a woman who was mentoring me, all, she was not a white lady I'm not sure what her ethnic background was but so she was thank God someone was there because uh, SUV just pulled up and these like people rolled down the window and started yelling about how I'm gentrifying you're gentrifying Harlem <laughs> you get the fuck out you're here like zoo watching and I was like oh my god wow. I don't know what to say and the lady was like just my mentor person was like just don't look at them she was like she was so cool she was like Oh no no, it's fine. Just just don't look at them. I'm like, oh my god, they're just attacking us verbally for like 15 minutes. <laughs> We're just like, wow, everything's fine. I mean, I'm trying to think of the point too. <laughs> I don't think the point even holds up because you're not zoo watch. You're looking at at. Not the people. We're trying to learn about the... Well, most of the people on this particular tour were religious, and they were interested in... The religious aspect. The religious aspect of the but they're gospel not, they're not looking music. at the, the yeah. black... Oh, look at all these blacks around. Right, like, right. Like, you took them on a tour of, like, like this, uh, Bed-Stuy, or right near Bed-Stuy, where all the Hasidic Jews are. Oh, right, right. East Williamsburg, yeah. Yeah, and you don't cover the... Just like, here's some of these black... These ones have leotards hiked up. Yeah, you yeah, know? It's like, yeah. That's zoo watching. Yeah, yeah. But the buildings and the history... Ah, it's... I, yeah, I can see why they think that, but it's like, no, that's not at all what's happening. It's not, I, I know. Well, I, I wanted to tell them. I wanted to say, ma'am, I've never been <laughs> asked to leave a target them. for yelling slurs. <laughs> I just want you to know. It's so funny with those gentrifiers, too, because you're like, you know, before you guys got here, this neighborhood was all white. <laughs> and it, then- it, Harlem was white. And so there was a it's really interesting the history of Harlem because it was originally like uh, a little Italy. It was oh, like really? the more famous uh, little Italy than what we think of now in like Soho area. And then they decided to um, settle, like make residential blocks on the area. They spent all this money making the residential blocks. And then in like the 1890s, there was a bad stock market collapse. Mm. So that's why they w- decided they were only l- let black people live there because they were going to pay the nicer they were going to pay way more money to live in these nicer houses but white people were like oh well we can't afford to even live here interesting so it was like 1892 but yeah it was um it was so interesting doing that tour because one of the things i love about tour guiding is meeting people from the world and making fun of them but mm-hmm. i love australian people always will come on that tour and just seem to they seem to be really judgmental of how americans have this history of slavery which it's like of course it's bad or whatever but they would always be like oh isn't that terrible can you imagine it's like we all know what you guys did to the yeah, aborigines exactly. we didn't okay? walk them off a fucking plank <laughs> yeah like what are you talking about come on but I, they would just love i mean to- in tasmania they were like come look at the end of the cliff like there's nothing there like push them Oh wow! They I didn't know that. They, cle- they like, yeah. like when you have a field full of weeds and they just like burn it all down or just like cut it all. That's uh, what they did with the Tasmanian indigenous. Uh, They're just like kill them all so we can have this place. Get rid of them. Uh, yeah, who could expect that from prisoners? Oh, I love when a country fucking judges us. Uh, I know. I love it. Like, I Whoa. love it. And I had an Australian roommate too, and she would do the same thing. Like, oh, the racism is just awful. Because like, you know really, why? Really? You know why they don't see it? Because they still don't see indigenous as real humans. Uh, probably so like, look what you did to humans yeah oh, we had a cattle problem yeah but, right, right. <laughs> but you guys <laughs> yeah. did this to human yeah. beings they're not, they're monsters yeah <laughs> that's great but i know it's, it's funny that like a thing about tour guiding is like i learned about people from other cultures supposedly but i think i was just now i'm just like making a i have random stereotypes in my mind from like oh like australian people uh-huh. are they think that they're better than us and they're self-righteous it's got to be the ones on a tour yeah. Like those people would be the most self righteous. Yes, absolutely. I fucked this up. Um, um Yeah, so I did I did a bunch of 
Um, I did a bunch of different ones as well, but then like when I transitioned into doing the private tours, that's when I ended up. I was doing less of like this is a building, you know. I was doing what was a, the private tours like a, like a family would be like. We want to hire you to take us around New York. I worked for a company, so the company would set it up for me. It would be either four hours or eight hours. I would go usually with a private car. Sometimes I would take people um, on the train, but I would just spend usually eight hours with an entire family. And it was like by the end of it, either... I loved these people and they were like amazing people or I was like these you are an utter nightmare and I cannot wait to get away from you like I had one I again Australians let's just I will just hate on them some more I had they're the worst drunks they're not great travelers so obnoxious I or they are good but it's like 50 50 okay or horrible these people were awful I was in a bus with them for eight full hours and it was like everyone was coupled off except one guy so he kept like you know, migrating over to me. It's like, I'm not talking the whole time. I'm like, and here we are looking at the, we're looking at the Brooklyn Bridge now. And they kind of like mill around. But every time he would just fucking stick himself to me and, you know, and I'm like such a non-confrontational person that yeah. I'm just like, well, isn't that interesting and special? You know, I can't the really. stuff he would talk to you about? He was, it was, I, <laughs> it was like being on a blind date. And I say this in my act, but it was, it's really like being on a blind date for eight hours with somebody I could not stand. And then. And you can't walk away. You can't walk away. And so I just, and then also again, like, uh, because I'm just such a non-confrontational person, I don't have a good, I don't have good boundaries with people where like. My boyfriend, Mike, is somebody I'm blown away by his boundaries. Like, if he doesn't want to talk to somebody in any context, it could be in a work context, anything. He's like, okay. And he just doesn't talk to them. Mike has autistic um, uh, tendencies without any autistic uh, background. Yeah. I, he, he's, he and I are the exact opposite in that respect and not yeah. much else. But I love that about him. But finally, I got my revenge on these fucks because we went to the 9-11 <laughs> memorial and my boyfriend said something he said something i don't even remember what it was about the australian boyfriend my australian boyfriend yeah. <laughs> uh he said something about who he was just repulsive also i hope he's listening to this i fucking hated you <laughs> and i hated you talking to me um he said something about 9-11 and I just felt like, oh my God, this is my fucking chance. And so I just pretended to get really offended by what he said. Nice. And I was like, I don't know why you would say something like that. And there was like 30 minutes left in the tour. <laughs> just to shut him up. Just to shut him up. And I was just so pissed. So I just kind of like turned on him. And um, <laughs> yeah, it was it was actually really eye opening because they tipped me like five hundred dollars, and I was like, oh, that's how you get acting upset because they're trying to appease you. Yes, because I was like, I was wow. your best friend, and then you totally crossed the line. That's like when a waitress always says, like, if you spill something on someone by accident, you will get a better tip because you you will feel bad, and they'll be like, don't don't, it wasn't your fault. Here here's some extra money. Mm, so don't feel bad. Yes, it's like a psychological mind game. I mm-hmm. was like, I think I just cracked the code. Yeah, because the reality is, if you're like, fuck that chick, she just yelled at me. I'm not tipping her. Yeah. But it's the opposite. Yeah. And usually Australians, not good tippers, I not have to say. Not good tippers. So this was a, and then also this, I remember this busload too, they had been saying bad stuff when we were going through Chinatown and they're like saying like, I can't repeat it on a podcast because I don't, you know, I, I don't want it to be taken out of context, but you can guess, you can fill in the blank of like something that they were saying in Chinatown that was wildly inappropriate. Meanwhile, I'm taking them to my restaurant where I know the people. <laughs> and, <laughs> that you were working at? Yeah. And I'm like, sorry, I'll be back next week. <laughs> That's so great. Yeah. Yeah, Austria, yeah. No, they don't tip at all. It's not part of their culture. I had I had other Australian people. I once had a bus of forty Australian farmers. It was like a mail trip, which I don't know what the fuck that is, but bogans. Ugh, total bogans. And I had to beg them to tip, and then they like barely tipped me. It was it took them to like some place in the East it's, Village. It's like, dude, Australia travel board. You just gotta let people know when they get out. It, it's it's it's. I, I said when when you went to China. Did you ever go to China? No, no. Okay, Mike did. But there should be a sign at the airport be like, hey, the toilets here are different than in your culture. Yeah. So don't <laughs> yeah. flush and don't yeah. expect it to be toilet paper. Have it with you. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But like just at the airport, there should, same thing with Australia. When you board the plane for America, like, hey, guys, you're going to America. Have a great day. Just so you know, the wage employees are underpaid. So yeah. it's, it, you just so have you know to we're tip. fucking people. Yeah. But that's the thing. They did know. 
Because I made an announcement to them. And they that's the thing that I don't like about Australian people because I think, and again, this is a stereotype I've created based on uh, limited interaction. Yeah, sure, go for they it. They know, but they think that it's wrong. So they feel like, oh, well, I'm not, I'm entitled to not tip because the system that you've created is actually is unfair. So you're the ones that are wrong. Wow. And it's like, no, you're being cheap. You're being cheap, actually. <laughs> yeah. So I, I kind of like tipping in a way where it's like, um, let's just find out who of our friends is a cheap ass. Let's just fucking find out. Do you ever now. tip more when you're like getting coffee or something? And then if someone, I always find if someone's there with you, it makes you tip the $2 instead of the $1. Because <laughs> they're, <'cause> they're <laughs> yeah. looking over your shoulder yeah. and you don't feel I'm like. I'm good. Yeah. Especially Meanwhile, like then I kick a homeless man out of the way. <laughs> yeah. I do a thing where I have like a set amount of money. If I get like extra money for something, I allot some of it to tipping. And I'm like spreading money around. Oh, that's so cool. So I'll be like, oh, $5. And then if I don't have it, then it's like, sorry. It's out. Yeah, I love those those Frank Sinatra type people who are like just carry hundreds and Ugh. that's tips. Ugh. It's just for tips. So daddy ish. I oh love it. Oh my god! Do you ever lie to these people on tours? Oh, I would. I would like create a whole false uh, identity for myself. Wow. I had one of my things I was doing was I was wearing a fake wedding ring uh, it was like an engagement ring that my mom had as like a piece of costume <laughs> jewelry and I'd be like I just can't wait for my Christmas wedding and I would talk about my boyfriend <laughs> yeah <laughs> that didn't exist just playing a role for no reason yeah just to make oh. it keep it interesting because then it would make me focus because I have to remember like what I said and what I did it I had a whole thing and then I was kind of experimenting if saying I was pregnant if I would get more tips that way being like I hope I'm not starting to show early on yeah. Wow. Yeah. Bert would do this thing when he would do the uh, when he was doing clubs still, um, um, before he discovered Instagram, um, that he would do a like you know check drop spots come. So he'd be like, mm-hmm. hey, and he'd do this raffle of like giving something away, and he would give all the extra tips to one waitress. Oh, yeah. that's and awesome. Then he would bring that waitress on stage, like, hey, all your extra tips are going to this to whatever. I don't know how he do the extra. That's whatever. so cool. But he would instruct them to be like, what are you gonna do with with this extra tip money if 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 you get it or whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, I think like he would go an extra ten minutes. He goes, everybody's got to throw in an extra two dollars for doing this, and one waitress gets it. And he would instruct him not to say like put it in the bank because nobody wants to get behind that. Mm-hmm. He'd say say something like a legit dream that they can get behind. Like one of them would go, like, "I'll take my mom to the movies or my oh, daughter." Oh yes, movies. and people are like, Sw- "Oh yeah, here, here." Yes, and they, but they wouldn't even have a daughter, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> or a mom, and it'd just be like, "Just yeah. say it." Yeah, yeah, I would. I think that that's so much more fun because it's like no one wants to hear like I'm a comedian. This is my day job, and I'd really rather be doing something else. <laughs> Trying to get by. Please yeah, me. yeah, yeah. Oh, it's so fun to just create a, a narrative. Oh, it's so fun. And I was kind of doing a thing because Mike and I had started dating. So right after that point, I was like, wouldn't it be funny if I'm a tour guide and like my boyfriend's in the mafia, but I don't know. And I'm like, he's working at family business again. (laughs) Why are they always going on trips? I don't know. The air conditioning (laughs) broke again, you know, (laughs) just like letting them put together a puzzle. It's kind of like dinner theater, you know. Oh, it's so fun. Also, we're comedians. So it's like it's just a form of riffing. Yeah. Yeah. I was at I was at a, a to Oaks Lodge or something in, in Vail and uh, these it's mob you can't get a seat you have to wait like are you guys leaving like in like 15 minutes like we'll wait because mm-hmm. there's no room mm-hmm. so we got a chair someone else is like I have, like I saw him wait like hey we're, we're getting up it's like it's mobbed here right I'm like yeah you should before we got here I'm like there was a full on fight and the wow. guy laughed and everyone in my group was like there wasn't um, and I was like he was like what happened I was like oh these people like pushed like, we were here first then they got in each other's face and started full fist fighting. <laughs> yeah. And all my friends were like, all right. <laughs> like, to go with it. And it was just so fun. It was like, they had to be separated. Nobody at the table. The security came in. The guy's like, what? Uh, when? I'm like, like 10 minutes before you got here, dude. Oh, I love a little lighthearted lie. Yeah. Liven up your life. Doesn't hurt anybody. Oh, it's great. Like, what's he going to believe? Two random strangers fought? It's fine. Yeah, it happens. Oh. It happens all the time. Do you ever lie about the tour? Well, sometimes, well, accidentally, because like they would give us, especially when I was doing the walking tours, yeah. they would give us so much information that I'm like, okay, I'm supposed to be giving a three hour walking tour because I would do like Midtown Manhattan architecture and I would like s- confuse people's names and it's like, you're not going to remember the, gu- the guy's name who like did the mosaic on the interior of the Chrysler no building. Zero chance. So I'd just be like, Bob Hutchinson, you know. It like, makes it sound more legit. Yeah, details make <laughs> Good it sound old more legit. Bob Hutchinson, but yeah, there was a lot of there was a lot of mixing up stuff like that. 
But I wanted to do a thing, um, and I did do it briefly in Little Italy. It was like a kind of game show concept I had where it's like, I'm just misinforming people. And it's like, you be the judge. Are cannolis from Africa? You know, something like that. Dude, here's the cool thing. As, as a tour guide, you are an expert. Yeah. You're at least supposed to be, an, and beyond yeah. what I do on this podcast, I mean like a legit expert. That's, yeah. So if you say a lie, that person will forever go, no, no, no. Tour the guy tour guy told, told me. Told me. That's yeah, beyond, that's encyclopedia level truth. And you are actually considered an expert, and I guess that's why you have to go through the like whole program to get the the license. So you have to take like a comprehensive exam. Oh, really? And like I was a New on, York license, so you can't have somebody just randomly saying facts. Yeah, you have to be licensed, and and then I was on um, Mysteries at the Museum as like a qualified historian, which what is people that? TV show. It's some TV show where they just tell stories of museum pieces, but people find me on it all the time. It's always like weirdos and. And they're like sending me, are you a comedian and a historian? I'm like, uh, it, who who could it be? A person that looks just like me with my same name? Like, yes. That yeah. was my day job. I got paid $200 a shoot. And I was like, thank God. I need this. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, I would just, I would love to lie about stuff. Like, I heard a thing about like Graceland and people were like pre-internet. Mm-hmm. And people were just like, if somebody asked a question, you just had to say something. You couldn't say I don't know because then they lost faith in you. Yes, so it's better for them and you if you just say something. And if and if some other expert came in mm-hmm. uh, on the tour, they're like, you know, Elvis heads. Mm-hmm. So they're like, mm, I thought Elvis his favorite thing was peanut butter and banana. You go, no, no. A lot of people think that. Yeah, but it's not. <laughs> yeah, well, there is a pressure too because I think especially because these private tours are so expensive people like want to get the most out of their money so they would just ask me these asinine questions they'd be like well what's that it's like well that's a building sir yeah. there's no story behind this apartment <laughs> building but i'd just be like well in 1982 george wallace yeah, yeah you know it's just like okay it's almost easier to like just go off on a riff than like shame them for being a dumbass mm-hmm. <laughs> my buddy wanted you know those all up and down the eastern seaboard especially like uh, Providence and like Rhode Island areas, they have these like little plaques of like something historical that happened oh, in yeah, the 18th yeah. or 19th, 17th century or whatever. Yeah. Um, my friend was like, you can just make those. So he was like, what should I <laughs> get great. in my yard yes. in Maryland um, to make it seem, because not too crazy, because people are like, no way. Mm-hmm. Um, this is not where the Constitution was signed. Yes. No one will be that. But they'll be like, they'll be like, um, I don't know, some like small, like a vice president or something from way, way before once slept here for a month while yes. they were taking courses or something like that. That's great. And they, people will put plaques like the Mark Twain house on 8th Street. He yeah. lived there for a year. Wow. And they call it the Mark Twain house. It's like, wow. who gives a shit? That's a version of like, this is where Seinfeld started. And like yeah. seven clubs have that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it yeah. It was like, you mean he started in New York? And right. did tons of spots? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would, I, would, I would love a good lie. Oh, love it. It really it really made things interesting. And I tried to do like a little bit of bits about it, like doing a character of like, hope my boyfriend proposes soon because people just eat that shit up. I mean, southern southern women are like, honey, don't rush it. Like, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Charlene. <laughs> Was there ever any, were there any fights in the groups? Um, nothing, nothing too crazy. I don't remember anything too crazy. I do remember I had like, a, I guess maybe someone who has special needs in a family and I, I wasn't sure. What do you mean? Like vegans? Uh, we, it, well, not quite. Kosher? I'm not sure. He seemed like a little bit off in yeah. a way, but I, I wasn't, I couldn't put my finger on it. There wasn't any diagnosis offered, but he got lost. He, he, we were all waiting to go to, again, my favorite restaurant in Chinatown, No Mua Tea Parlor. The first the first Chinese restaurant in New York, and it's fantastic. No, have you ever well, been I there? I must have passed it. it, you, it it's likely that you haven't, because it's on Doyers. It's like a, totally out of the way. It's like if you go all Is the way- in Chinatown? Mm-hmm. I mean, I get high and just wander, so I, I love- I feel like I've passed No Mois, unless there's another thing like that. It is it is a fantastic restaurant. You should really go no as soon moi. as you get a chance. Yeah. I love it. I'll and it's tomorrow. And it's totally reasonably priced. Yeah. Don't go tomorrow because they're going to have a wait on a Friday for even lunch. I'll go on Monday. Yeah, go on Monday. Um, anyway, so we're waiting to go in for the restaurant. And then this guy, this young guy, just completely disappeared. And I guess he didn't have a phone. And so oh, I'm yeah, like, foreigners. I'm like, and I hated his family to begin with because they made me take their photo in front of the Trump Tower, which I was like. This is recent. 
This was, well, I haven't tour guided in a while, but yeah, this was like during Trump, Trump presidency. Remember they protested outside the hotel and it's like, he's not there. He just, it's one of the many he built. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So there, and then they had a, the daughter-in-law was also vapid and she was kept saying things like, oh, she said, um, I just wish I could hug every dog in the world. And I was like, I fucking Ugh. hate this family. I hate Ugh. everything about you. Kill now I'm like, yourself. It's like, that's your wish. Also, you said that out loud. It's not just like, oh man, I love dogs. It's like, oh, look at that dog. I love. It's like saying it to a stranger so, so that they think of you as a certain thing. It's just yeah, like, I'm like, I'm not a dog person, actually. So yeah. you're, that's lowered you in my. It's uh, lost like, on me. You want to hug the. Every dog. Ugh. That's a lot of rabies. I mean, lot. it's like a version of putting on Instagram your engagement picture or just like your, your daughter or your fucking. I'm a lover of animals. Ugh. So, yeah, I already hated them. But then I was like tearing through the streets of Chinatown trying to find like this. Oh, this guy, this lost This young dog. guy. Wow. This young guy. And, and he also, I also was having an issue with these people in Chinatown saying different things in a certain accent that i'm like please stop because like i the, know the, the people one, at that restaurant the 80s restaurant the yeah 80s, i'm like, like yeah. i can't <laughs> we all know I, what it is. and i have to say it in a way that i'm like oh no no yeah we don't do that here i'm like you're about to be um put on blast on the internet and i'm gonna be behind <laughs> you like in, in the trump tower um so that that was probably the most crazy <laughs> thing that ever happened did you find him yeah he wandered back eventually he came back just like Bandit does. Yeah, he was fine. Wow. He was fine. He had a great time. Autistic, just like staring at stuff. Poor guy. What did you do? Looked at the sun for a while. I know. I felt bad for him. It's like you're, you know, you you're struggling here, and then your family's a nightmare. And they were from Florida. They were from Florida, but the vapid daughter-in-law was like, "But I'm originally from Ohio." Like, like, who do cares? You, do who you understand shit? how that sounds? Well, yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm actually from an, another. Awful, mediocre derided state. state. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, everybody hates Ohio during elections because uh, isn't it like mostly Ohio chooses the president? Is it? I it's know those, that like, they're could go either way states. Yeah, but I feel like they did go red this past time. Yeah, they go back and yeah. forth. So it's like it's such a oh, big and they state. Didn't win. Yeah. yeah. It's such a big state. It's like California is always going to be Democrat. New York's always going to be Democrat. Yeah. And then some places are always going to be Republican. Yeah. So those like they're already settled and then the like, swing. The swingers. They just have a full vote. Uh do you ever catch anybody fucking or anything? Um, no, nothing crazy like that. Although I did go on I went on a tour once. It was a guy and his son, and the son was like fifteen, and the guy was like, I don't know, not that old, maybe like fifty five, I would say. Yeah. And so the son wasn't talking, so it was like again me on a blind date with a fifty five year old guy who's like never been around a like medium hot woman in like the past <laughs> twenty years. Yeah. So I'm and we're like walking and the son doesn't say shit. So it's like I'm just talking with this guy st- into his eyes for like hours, and um. Then, he, first of all, I, there was a bad red flag, which I would never abide by this on a date. He refused to ch- to cheers me when we got pizza and I like ordered a beer because I was like, well, I'm going to. I was always drinking on that job. And he, like, <laughs> cheers and he was like, no. He said no. He was like, it's a pagan ritual. I was like, okay. Like, <sighs> let's. Fucking Larry David wannabes. Oh, my God. And then he was I, somehow I had given him my phone number in case we got separated and i was very clear that this phone number is my personal phone number and it's only in case we get separated on the tour and he was texting me like asking me where can i where can i go to get furniture you know just like an onslaught of texts later in the day it's just like and i'm like dude dude i'm not your like i don't want to fuck you i don't want to fuck you i would fuck the son a lot not really but i did have one i had uh so we worked with this car company right Mm -hmm. we work with this like private car company and all the drivers were russian which i um love russian people you know they're great and some of the guys were like really fun you know and there was one guy though who uh had some kind of speech impediment where he couldn't um he couldn't speak but he could text so he had my phone number and i worked with him all the time and we would just text everything back and forth and his name was like yuri or something and he would do this thing where he would get into some kind of psychotic road rage and that was the only time he would speak he would start slamming his fist down on the (laughs) horn and shouting fuck fuck you and it was like it would ruin the tour and i said to the guy that i i'm like i'm like he 
he's unstable. Like, I can't be in a car with this guy. Like, not to mention he just ruined a 16th birthday party, right. you know, but everyone's right. like, oh my God, what happened? <laughs> and so he would, he asked me out multiple times. But but then it was like how how what are we gonna text on the date like it's not he gonna was, like, happen. Autistic to that level where he couldn't like. I think talk. he had so, uh, like a stutter, you know, like oh. so, like a severe Russian stutter or something. You know the term sex pest? Yes, I do. Have you, is that an old term or kind of in the last few years? I've only heard of it more recently, but yeah. I do. But I, um, I feel like that's not something that I ever really have uh, an issue with because like. I just ignore. I just ignore and I don't. Fuck off. Yeah, I'm just like, I'm like very nice in a way that's like, oh, this is my family, you know? What do but you mean? Like, oh, you're my brother. Like, good job, hon. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah, I'm yeah. not very flirtatious. And I even Morgan Murphy once to a friend of mine who liked her, liked her. Mm-hmm. This is when we were open micers and she could sense it. And she would always be like, I'm really glad you're such a good friend of mine. I'm glad to have friends like you in my life. Yes. <laughs> just keep saying that. Just deflect it. And then he just didn't. He just was like, I'm going to go for it. It's like, I don't know, man. I feel like she's giving you every sign <laughs> no. you need that she's going to say no if you ask her out. <laughs> oh, she's so hysterical. Yeah. So funny. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Mike Mike even says that about me. He's like, you have a total wall up where it's like, yeah, I'm People like won't. I'm like being kind, but like not in a way that's flirtatious at all. In a way that's like mom, yeah. mommy. I, I want I just when I heard the term sex pass, it was like you ever hear something put in words and you're like, Oh yes. I've seen that. A or concept I, codified. Yeah. yeah. Right codified, exactly. Where you're like, it all makes sense. I'm glad you said something. Yes. Or they'll be like, you know, I never thought this so and so comic was funny. And you're like, Whoa, me neither. But yeah. it was always like <laughs> yeah. just under the surface where I yes. couldn't like face it until like yes. you've said it. Now I'm like, Yes, I agree yes. and no. The unconscious. Sex pass is such a weird one where it's like we're all hanging out, we have this crew, and then you know, Bob keeps asking Samantha out and it's like annoying after a while. It's yeah. like, once is fine, you gotta know. Try again in a month, maybe she changed her mind. Yeah. But it's like every time and eventually Samantha's like, dude, I just wanna play video games yeah, with everybody. Yeah, leave me the fuck alone. Yeah, like you haven't done anything illegal, but just like, it ruins the party. Yeah, it's it's a, it's also like a desperate vibe. It's like, go find somebody else, come on. Yeah, no. Yeah, I feel like I've the only time I've ever had that I just like ended up dating the guy. I'm like, I guess this is easier. I guess <laughs> I'll just go with it. <laughs> Do you know the term sympathy hand job? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know like, now. I must have gotten some of those. Yeah. Where like Let's a girl's get dropping it you together. off. Yeah. <laughs> or vice versa. And then you're just like, you keep trying. And she's like, not going to come in or invite you in to fuck. But you keep trying. And eventually, like, oh, just, just <laughs> fucking, you're done. You'll be good. It's Goodbye. Like, yeah. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> <laughs> um, would you ever do this again, tour guiding? I thought about it. My license is expired. Um, but do you the, really need one? Could you, you do it as a comedian? You need a license because this is a thing that you have to do. You have to have insurance. You have to have private insurance as a tour guide because I guess supposedly if you're like taking somebody around and a German person like steps in a hole and breaks their ankle like you're, you could be because you're taking them around as a professional okay. you're liable okay wait here's a question yeah did you just say supposedly supposedly it's like who knows with these German people no no I was, okay. <laughs> I was but but yeah so you have to have the tour guide's license you you have to have the insurance and you can't get hired. I could do it as like a free agent, I guess. Yeah. But, but um, do you need insurance? I I don't know if you really do. You're supposed to have it, but it's like, you know, who knows? Yeah. Um, um, Supposedly. Yeah. What What is the word? I, I Suppose, think you, I think supposedly. You did it with the B there. Supposedly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like a common. <laughs> Supposable thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can you just do a business? It's like that uh, massage person, whatever masseuse. Yeah, you're like you need to be accredited in each state. I'm like, what? Yeah. Can't you just be like, I give good massages? Yeah, I guess you could. I just give little hand jobs. That's I like- would love actually if a comedian was like, well, Alexis does it with pizza tours. He does it. But like, can't you yeah. just like, yeah, give me fifty bucks each, and I'll take you on a tour, and I'll show you some funny things. I'll have a routine. Yeah, I mean, I could do it. I feel like the reason I haven't. Is because I want to put my energy into my creative yeah. stuff, and so it's like it's time and energy. And I would notice like 
people would want to go for like eight hours. No, nah, and that. it's it's so long. Two and a half hours. Tops. Even two and a half. Yeah, you're like, ugh, it's just draining. My yeah. my fantasy day job right now is like barista. Really? I just want to go in. I want to be friendly. I want to be like, ooh, the regular Jerry, and then just you know, that's it. <laughs> friendly in short doses too. Short it's like doses. Because that was the thing. It's like I would get put with these people. Like I had a one family where I was with them for three eight hour days and oh. it's so hard to say no to the Everybody money for coming in and ruining the fucking shot there we go <laughs> it's so hard to say no to the money because you're looking at it it's like oh this is like twelve hundred dollars that i'm gonna make in a week and how can i say no to that yeah but then they're just hi Somebody yeah. wants a tour of my body. <laughs> um, sex best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're being a total sex best. <laughs> okay. um, but yeah, I don't know what I was saying. Uh, the the people were a nightmare, though. That's the thing. It's like I would take I, if somebody wants to go around and they like if it's somebody that I know well, then I'm like, okay, you're a friend. Right. right. But it's just so much energy to not be a cunt to somebody when they're just kind of being insufferable and I'm like a socially aware person where it's like I can kind of like zero in on somebody's like psychosis and like their narcissism immediately mm-hmm. and it's hard for me to be sympathetic in a way that's not totally plastic. We need like a dick's last resort of of um service industry things. Yes. Well that is service industry but of yeah. like you know I mean Yeah. What is that what is that job style of a tour guide? It's um it's it, it's not service industry it's something else um it's, like it's tourism yeah Tour, it's tourism yeah, yeah so one of those like, i'm going close. to be rude to you that's yes. part of the gig yes, yes. Question, like damn that's a dumb question <laughs> but even that though it's just like i'm like i just prefer to be alone silent <laughs> yeah because it was draining it was draining dylan used to do a tour of new york of like um his thing was so fucking funny that he would do. I mean, but it was he, like dark history of the rich people. He was his bus thing that he was doing, where he'd just be like, "Ugh, over there, whatever." It was just kind oh, of really? like a gay, like <laughs> I hope I'm not mischaracterizing it, but it was just kind of like gay sass. Yeah, which was like, oh, that's kind of fun. And I think he was also doing, you know, a much shorter one, and there's no interaction. The like, interaction is the it's draining. A show. Thing. Yeah, you shut the fuck up. And yeah, just let yeah, me talk. that's what you need. That's what you would. I'm saying that's what I would need actually to like be able to do it. Like, no, 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 no questions. Just like, here's my routine. Yeah, yeah. This is my routine. It's not about you. I'm not listening to a story about how your wife left you for obvious reasons. Wow. I would think you would get asked out constantly. Yeah, because, I mean, because like. Just the version of like I'm in America. I'm like, oh, here's a, like a lady. I'll have my, yeah. my experience. Yeah, I mean, I think that once I w- went into my married character, my engaged character, planning her Christmas wedding. Yeah, then it became easier. Then it was like, well, nobody's nobody's asking me out. So <laughs> I'm having Santa at my wedding. I, that was always a big detail of it. I was like, Santa may come. <laughs> Because it's a Christmas wedding. Yes. <laughs> I gotta start lying more. It's reminding me now of how it's fun it is. So fun. I feel. I feel like I've had a, like a compulsive lying problem my whole life. But it's, it's great. Just, it hurts no one. The ones that hurt no one. Slipping into a character. Like I guess I'm this. And and the, and the walking the fine line of taking a chance. I had a thrift store shirt from oh some Wyoming bar. Mm-hmm. Like you've been to Wyoming. I'm like it's gorgeous. It's <laughs> yes, it's the best. And then just I like love it. What if they call you on it? Yes. What if they're like. Oh yeah, have you been to the other place? And you have to like fuck. Now, yeah. now they kind of might know. Yeah. And you're like, yeah, no, I was at there once. It's a long time. It's a bit hey, fuzzy memory, or it's so fun. It's like you get a rush from it. And if they catch you on it, it's so embarrassing. Yeah. Even though you know you're lying, if they're like, that's not at all. Are you lying to me? Yeah. <laughs> You'd be like, no. And they're like, I think you are. <laughs> but you are. And then you just run ahead. out. Yeah. Just run out. Well, I have a. I kind of lie where sometimes. I feel I get like a little bit of social anxiety in like a group context. And if somebody is like asks me if I've seen a movie for yep. some reason, I'm triggered to lie, even though I've never Just seen yes. it. Book. I do it with books. Yeah. And people are like, really? You've seen that? You've seen that movie? I'm like, oh, yeah. Crazy. You know? And then I'm just like, God, they know. They yeah. know. I haven't. No, I did not see a movie about an um, uh, uh, independent film about the Andes plane crash <laughs> and the soccer team. It's just like you want them to be like, have you seen it? Like, yeah. Like, now go on with what you're going to say. Just go on. Don't put the pressure on me. Yeah. I'm just and trying like, to survive well, here. Like, I will never read it or watch it. You yeah. ruin it. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. This is the closest I'll get to, f- to finding yes. out about this movie. Yes. Just tell me the whole plot. 
Tell me everything. Um, uh, I've seen Norman do that. He does it really good because he'll focus on the one thing that might be. We were at the, I was at the Chappelle one with my friend Chris. Uh, works at Live Nation. He's like, you want to go see this Chappelle movie? Mm. I was like, yeah, okay. I want to see his documentary about stand up. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Green Room afterwards was just like all oh, these hangers on. Ooh, oh tough. my god yeah we went tough. down there for free pizza and booze yeah and then you see these people showing up that weren't there that just want to be around Chappelle and his aura and mm-hmm. get to show their face yeah um, mixed with some people who knew him it was like oh Chappelle's gonna be at Madison Square Garden let's go over there yeah so I guess Norman uh, was with Michael Che mm-hmm. who probably knows him pretty well yeah so he's like you wanna go over there and Norman's like okay they just finished a show mm-hmm. um, so I'm there with Norman um and somebody goes up to him and was like, what'd you think? He goes, ah, a little self-serving. And it's like, and the guy's like, you know what? That's a good point. It probably was a little self-serving. And then the guy leaves. I'm like, you just got here. You didn't see the movie. He's like, <laughs> took a shot. I'm like, dead ah, on, man. That's great. Dead on. That's great. I mean, like, with no knowledge of this movie, you're oh. able to give out a great detail. Social improv. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Whatever. Or like a fine restaurant. Like a little overrated, but quality food. You're like, yeah. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. I know. It's it's um when you don't say something positive and you give like a little like a little criticism, it just yeah. seems so much more believable. Yeah. You don't just go with the flow. Which you could also do, like best restaurant I've ever been to. Yeah. 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 I, I guess it's the extremity of the feelings yeah. that camouflages the lie. Yeah. Do you ever lie? Have you ever lied in a relationship before? What do you mean? Yeah. Really? Uh, what, uh, what? Of course. Oh my God. In a relationship? I feel like uh, we're like the, all on. Here's why you yeah. were late. You never just make up. Oh, no, no. Sorry, I was checking Instagram too much. You just say that? That's why I was late? Yeah. You don't go traffic? No, Shit, sorry, I had to no, do this and no. this? No, no. That's wild. That's wild. I feel like lying. It's unhealthy what you're doing. <laughs> bare honesty <laughs> that's crazy for a little th- oh it's nuts i feel like but like mike will just like make fun of me you know it's just like okay fair. we're just like we well, just fair but also like well i needed you that what the fuck you can't do that oh oh yeah no no maybe i guess i've definitely lied in other relationships you yeah know? But never to Mike, Mike Vecchio, my boyfriend. We'll revisit this in 10 years if you guys ever break up. <laughs> yeah. be like, oh, so much. I lied about never lying. That was the biggest lie. Um, uh, how'd you get out of this job? So I um, let my tour guide's license expire. And then I was guiding on an expired license, like a rogue. Why like is an rogue? errant tour that guide. very rogue. And uh, then I ended up, thank God, getting a small writing job. So I was going to have to re, uh, I was going to have to reapply to the tour guide's license, take the test again, get the insurance again. And Ugh. in order to get the insurance, you have to do another hoop you have to jump through. You have to join GANIC, which is the Guides Association of New York City. And it is a cast of characters, mostly people in their 60s, who are like tour guides in like bizarre New York City niches. You have to go to the meetings. You have to chat with people. You have to go to the the hang after, which is like always somewhere weird, like California Pizza Kitchen. You have to be like, well, I loved your talk about William Henry <laughs> Just to get Harrison. Approved. Yes, it's crazy. <laughs> it's such a rigmarole. I would I would be like, this is not part of the job. I just you saw the application. Is, yes, they they want you to befriend them. And so I was like, God, I don't want to do all that again. So I finally, thank God, I got a little writing job, and I was like, okay, I'm just, I'm just cutting the cord because I was kind of close with stand up anyway. Yeah. So. Oh, that's great. Yes, that was the ending of it. Such a great feeling of quitting your last day job. Oh God, it was such a relief because my boss, my boss who would coordinate the tours, he was just like totally emotionally unstable, and he also he would send me like to the wrong hotel to pick up people at the wrong hotel i'm call- uh, I'm like i don't know the car wouldn't show up i would have to call him he would flip out on me it was like a high-strung british guy he would just lose his mind yelling at me on the phone and i'm like i'm so sorry i'm just trying to find out where the the people could be you know and uh and so i was just like oh thank god i hate to be yelled at in a in a job context i could just feel myself getting cancer every time it happened <laughs> yeah that's so fun <sighs> Uh, by the way, uh, Katie's podcast is called Lady Journey. Yes. With Sarah Tolomash. Um, check that out. It's brand new. So pretty much you can catch up from episode one to episode 20. Yes, around 20. Yeah. Uh, that was a shot in the dark guess. Thank you. Yeah. You really nailed it. <laughs> yeah. You could have been a it, lie. It, it I wasn't like it. I looked it up. It was like really like, how many weeks ago they started? It's about that. Yeah, good. 
I bet you could guess someone's weight. You seem like you could. You weigh 187 pounds. Oh, you got me. <laughs> Fatty coming through. <laughs> I'm gonna, let me live legit guess your weight because you're thin enough where I feel like it won't be offensive. Yeah. 108? Oh, no. I'm about, I think, uh, 120. Oh, yeah. But thank you. You always want to guess lower. Is it 94 pounds? I was literally yeah. thinking probably 112. Yeah, let, me, let me lower it a couple. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Thank you. I'm ill. <laughs> I need help. I don't know. I don't know chicks <laughs> weights. I barely know men's weights. Um, damn, this is all interesting. What others? Were there any of the wild shit that happened during? Uh... Yes. I mean, there was other, it was mostly just interesting. I feel like it, you kind of realize what a shithole New York City is from the perspective of people around the world. Like, yeah, I had some. You got it from their point of view. Yeah. Like, oh. You're like, oh, it is really dirty everywhere. When they mention it, we're like, what's the garbage piles? Yeah. 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 They would be like, why is there trash everywhere in the street and I on love the that. benches? And you've gotten so used to it that people just, there's no alley, so you just pile up your trash. Yeah. I would take it personally. I'm like, oh, well, we have a lot of art and culture here, actually. I have Stockholm. <laughs> syndrome <laughs> one time i had this family they were from singapore and they were so like so clean there so gorgeous they were beautiful clean cut obviously very wealthy and the the kids i took them on the train yeah and they were like oh so like you know what do you have to keep the people from falling into the tracks like do you guys have a glass wall do you have a railing i'm uh, like we have a, a little poster that we put the number of people that fell on the tracks each year and whoa. we put it from train to train and they were like what yeah why don't you ever you take an airport shuttle and it's like you can't the doors open the wall doors open right next to the train doors there's yeah. no space to do that yeah 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 Ch china's like that i think yeah we have a we have a fucking really? poster oh, saying here's how many people fell. Should people not be dying on the train tracks regularly? They should break that down to how many people were pushed onto the tracks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and what what's the budget? Like, what's the cost of saving twenty people's lives? Yeah, I always think like this: how many people were uh, uh, hit by a train? This how many people died? I'm like that number should be the same. Yeah. And it's vastly lower. I'm like, who's surviving getting hit by a train? Well, I knew someone that did. She, an open micro girl. Who? And I think she still does comedy. I cannot remember her name, but she, it was a whole thing. She fell on the tracks. She What fell? Drunk? She, w no, it was in the morning. She was passed out, she claimed. So I'm not sure what the background on that was, but it went over her leg. And then she- No. Yes. She, her whole leg, it was saved, but it was like a very, one leg was like the size of a finger and then one leg was like a normal leg. But she had, they had a whole thing Wait. for her. Louie was there. Aziz was there. They did a big benefit for her, raised all this money they for her. They chopped both legs off. No, no. It hit, it went over one of her legs, but it was fine. It just bounced it, off it? Something happened where I know from the photos, she had one normal leg and then one other leg was like, Literally the width of my finger. In one spot or oh, the whole the thing? The whole thing was very thin. Yeah. It was nuts. It was nuts though. So it's like, I mean, that's going to, you move to New York to follow your dreams. You get hit by a train and then, it's I the think she still, think she does comedy still, I think. I do not remember her name though. Does she talk about the leg? You would have to. You have to be like, listen, one of my legs is very thin. <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're going to notice. You might have <laughs> noticed. I've seen badly drawn. Yeah. Damn. I know tragedy. I remember. I remember yeah, reading dreams. about that on Facebook, and I was like, I, ever since then, I'm like, I do not fuck around on the train. Do you ever, I don't do you ever stand feel the fear close. and then back up against the back wall, like no one's gonna shove me. Like, no, it's just, you can't stop thinking about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time, and I used to smoke like pot and stuff, and like take the train home, like especially like when I lived far out, and I would always immediately be like, I'm gonna die, <laughs> have a full on existential <laughs> crisis. And that's always fun. Yeah, God, the, the shovings. The shoving has it gotten worse for what you've seen or no? Oh yes, it's like way worse now than what it was the before subways. the pandemic. Yeah. Oh, the subways in general. I mean, I don't know. I I barely take them. You don't like when I used to live in like Queens. Wait, what's you know? worse to you? What do you see as worse? Then what do you mean? The I think the general subway seems fine, but the shovings have been worse. The shovings, yeah. Gone up. It's what is just the homeless people being let out. Um, the insane ones? I think from what I understand, um, yeah, it's the homeless people have been living in the subway more because the regulations during COVID have just been like more lax. That's from what I, I've been trying to like mm. read and understand the, what's going on with homelessness in New York city. Cause I'm just interested in it, you know, to, for my own self, for my own like compassion. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but from, from what I've read, I think 
the shelter system is very bureaucratic. People don't want to go there. It's tricky. They go to the trains, and then it was just not being policed at all. Yeah, when it's that, so in China, I don't know why I keep talking about this, but like if you're a homeless guy and you go to the subway, you'd be like, "What? I paid. I can I can be here." And they're like, "Oh, this is private. We don't. We know you're homeless and you're gross. So get out." Be like, mm-hmm. "But I paid. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, we don't care." Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, but here we don't have that. So if they're not going to enforce it, people are like it's warm here. Yeah, well, they're they are doing a crackdown now. They, they claim they claim that they're doing a crackdown, but it's like you never know. Is that like somebody just like being like, "Well, we're doing it." Yeah, and is the you word know? getting out to the homeless like, "Hey, don't yeah. go here. They're going to fucking beat you up." Yeah, well, it's like the train is not a safe place for homeless people either. So it's like, why? It, it's not safe for you to just be like living underground in the train all the time. You know, it's it's not. I don't think it's any safer than like wherever else you could be like the streets or the shelter i think it just ends up people kind of go there because they don't have anywhere else to go and it's like well i guess it's here you know yeah so damn like you could also be like attacked by a psycho i remember when it was remember when when the um uh, curfews were around Mm -hmm. i don't Mm -hmm. know if you were still living in brooklyn then queens then i was yeah but here anyway it was every business shut by 8 p.m for a while eight or nine whatever and then, so after that, there's nobody's out because there's no reason to be out. It's not yeah. like less places. You know, after midnight, less places are open. Mm-hmm. After 2 a.m., less places are open. But still, some places are open. So when you walk back from the cellar to mm-hmm. where you live, mm-hmm. if you do walk back, you'll still pass some open businesses. So yeah. plenty of people are still out. Yeah. Not like right now, but still plenty. But like, then there was no reason to be out. So the only people you saw were homeless. Ooh. And it felt so dangerous. Yes, yeah. It has felt more dangerous. And like, I, I've walked down to Chinatown recently. And it's like some areas down there uh, in that like long, that long park area where you're like, oh, the long oh. Strip, the Delancey, whatever. Yeah, you're like, I've just stumbled into an encampment. And yeah. you're, you're just like trying to keep cool. I don't know if they do anything though. Like the ones by me, Joe Liss and I always talk about it, but like, the West Village is, is crack and meth, I think. And East Village is more heroin. So heroin, homeless, they don't they don't bug anybody. Well, you, you're you um, so close to Tompkins Square Park, not to put your address out there, but Tompkins has like a long history of like the migratory punk homeless people, mm-hmm. which is like a whole other different thing, which I don't I don't feel like as scared of that, even though right. like they might they're more like once in a while. black leather and mm-hmm. the studs. But it's like, oh, this is kind of like a, a cultural phenomenon, I guess. I don't feel I feel less terrified of that, even if there's like drug use than like um a woman who's just like kind of screaming in a median you know right 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 yeah it's like i will occasionally have to not let bandit into like a, a planting a planter area because mm-hmm. i'm like oh there's a ton of needles in there mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. but like they're not robbing anybody so as yeah. long as you can get over the grossness sort of of it or the implied danger it's, yeah because it's not it's just not real yeah I used to work at St. Mark's Church when I first moved here. I worked in an uh-huh. experimental theater in there, and it was my job to not let <laughs> those type of people into the bathroom. <laughs> I oh, had the yeah. key, and I would just like only, but they would because they would go in there and they would just like shoot up. But they were always like cool about it, like just another minute, hun. <laughs> I'm like, <sighs> like sir, please. Yeah, yeah. I've, seen, I've I just graduated parking. college. <laughs> <laughs> there was a Wawa where there's so many people shooting up. They had to put uh, blue lights in the ceiling so that you couldn't find veins. Oh. So it would like hide your veins so it would de-incentivize people from coming in there. Wawa is such a luxurious place to shoot up. That's where I would want to be, you know, get a little sandwich, hydrate. I did see a park lady uh, yelling at one of the homeless ladies, like, there's kids around here. And she's like, I wasn't doing anything. Like, there's fucking needles and bloody tissues. Shut the fuck up. There's uh. kids here. You should be ashamed. And she was, she was, and she was just like, I didn't do it. Oh, man. Have but you ever done heroin? Have you ever done it? I want to. You want to? You want oh, to just yeah. try it? I need, I, yeah. Yeah. I won't. Not intravenous, though. You can just do a little nose heroin. I think smoking it is the way a lot of people do it. Oh, I didn't know that. Steve Agee told me that um, he did it, but he's deathly afraid of barfing. Mm. And so um, there was a circle of people that were all doing heroin. You know when you cave to peer pressure? Mm-hmm. Like, I shouldn't, but the people are. So you're like, okay, I just am. You don't even think twice about it. Mm. Um, so he goes, first guy smoked. Second guy smoked, and as the second guy was passing to the third guy, first guy barfed, and Steve was like, ugh, mm-hmm. well, whatever. And then the third guy smoked it and passed to the fourth guy, and as that guy was smoking, the second guy barfed. And then he goes, and then they passed to Steve. He goes, oh, no. 
I'm going to barf. Yeah. And he mm. goes, I'm out. And then the, the third guy barfed. And then he was like, oh, yeah, oh. yeah, no, I'm not doing it. But he was that close. Yeah. If he was second in line, he would have done it. Yeah. I mean, barfing is like, it just kind of, it ruins it. It, it ruins, ruins it. Because barf like, everywhere. Uh, I just, I now my mouth smells like acid. Yeah, it I'm just, not going to enjoy no. this fucking no. perfect day. I'll just have a little glass of wine. Yeah. <laughs> have you ever wanted to do it? I, I wanted to, I was kind of, I was in kind of like a little um, psychonaut uh, phase when I was in my teens and my early 20s, but you know, I feel like I've kind of aged out of it, but I do want to do ayahuasca. Yeah. Yeah. I want to, that's my big one that I feel like I'm not actively pursuing it, but I do think it's something that I'd like to try because that's the, that's like actually my speed where it's like, we're in a controlled setting. Mm -hmm. There are friends around, you know, what's going to happen. And it's also like, it's not like, um, partying. It's like, this is for a, for a purpose of self exploration. So yeah, where I, where I took it, it was, they, they had a, um, tourism board Mm -hmm. and a guy on there had done it a few times mm. and then he was trying to tell the tourism board that he was on like we should be the city that embraces ayahuasca we should separate ourselves mm. as an amazonian city that embraces it as opposed to everywhere else has the same amazonian tours of monkeys and like whatever else is out there mm-hmm. um yeah it'd probably be really good for the economy yeah the tourism board said no we're not letting a bunch of drug addicts we're not inviting them to our town um that's retarded we're not doing that and then he was like okay fine 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 but it's also part of indigenous culture so they weren't like mm-hmm. totally against it. they just didn't want these drug addicts coming and then he would one by one take the rest of the members of the tourism board for an ayahuasca trip and when they were done they were all converted to be like oh this isn't drugs oh i this love is that a journey like, or you got brainwashed <laughs> maybe, yeah. <laughs> but it was like this isn't gonna bring fucking beggars and and shit like, right you know, right like heroin tours would right or like meth you yeah, know this it's not is like one a... time you can't do it again for a year probably yeah it's like that in mushrooms is like it ain't gonna be an issue yes yes yeah um, i'm definitely on board with that i think yeah the scary drugs are like meth meth is one that i'm like never god what a terrifying terrifying drug i just want to know what what heroin feels like yeah i want to know that feeling the addiction is the really the only thing stop me from doing it yeah but i don't think that heroin is not one that you get addicted after one time it's like really? it's like the one where it's like it's so awesome you definitely want to do it again but you can't it's you have to be like only. okay one time only or maybe like i don't know once every four years or something right. like i'm gonna do heroin in a controlled setting but i think as long as you're not in that like party lifestyle of yeah. like just you know i used to think i could get i could just like I would just do it on the road because that way I'll be, I'll find a dealer on the road somewhere, then leave, and I'll have no access to it. Like if some fan was like, "I know how to get it," I'd be like, "Sweet!" In you know Tucson, I'll do it, and then I, what am I gonna do? I can't go back to Tucson to do heroin. Right. Yeah. But that's now a good... it's like, no, I can find it in New York. Oh yeah, if easily. I, I, any of us put our minds to it, we can find heroin in, inside a yeah, week. Yeah, I think I need to be with like I need to be with like friends though, because it's like you don't want to just accidentally OD on the road and then you're like nah, I'm in a fucking super 8 of and I'm, go- I'm nodding out in a super 8 like this is it it's such a perfect day <laughs> I'm glad I spent it with you yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah yeah well I'm not gonna do it but I'm always teetering yeah don't do it yeah. don't do it or if you do let me know let me know how it is <laughs> <laughs> I do it I have a problem now <laughs> if you ever legitimately want to do ayahuasca I can give you some um yeah, to maybe. Point you in the right direction. Maybe I know because I was. I think I was talking with you about this about how like I have been really focused on my career for a long time, and now I'm in my mid to late thirties, and now I do want to do. I do actually want to do lifestyle stuff that I've been putting off. Like I really wanted to like go to Italy. I really wanted to like go to Hong Kong, and it's like the pandemic set me back. Of like. Oh, I thought like, oh, one day I'll be like successful and have money, and I'll get to do like all these things that I want to do. And now I'm like, okay, well. I guess I just gonna have to squeeze in those things because <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm like getting older and yeah, I want to do those like life things. So also, whole- stand up is like your mode of expressing the rest of it of, yeah. of your life. Yeah, but sometimes we forget like so you got to have the life in order to have something to express. Yeah, it yeah, can't just be joke. It's just about pop culture. Exactly. Uh, well, I have such like an addictive personality where it's like f- performing is. Yeah. You know, it is like the high that I'm seeking in every every opportunity, you know, so it's like I will I will literally like, you know, stop myself. I have to stop myself. I'm like, I'll perform for th- six people at a bar. Like, I don't care. Right. I just want I just want to do the laughter. You know, I just want it. 
I'm a whore for it. I that's like and, a bit of heroin. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's there, we're definitely getting something that is like a drug from hearing oh, people yeah. laugh. Oh, yeah. It's big serotonin My friend boost. David Taylor pointed it out. He was like, and 100% true. People like, so nice stand up. You're giving back to people, giving laughter. And it's like, shh, that's incidental. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just for us. Yeah. So he said, like, if I had a room full of people show up and was like so laughing so hard, way into it, and then they died in a bus accident on the way home, you'd be like, oh, you know, I don't care. Weird. Yeah. Yeah. But you're like, but they laughed at me. You'd be like, oh, you know those people that fucking that I crush with? They're all dead. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so you don't really care yeah. about them at all. Yeah. You just need that laughter. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like it's like such an affirmation that you. It, it can take over. I mean, I feel like in my relationship, I'm just like going for the laugh, you know, even yeah. like with friends, family, it's like just hitting, I'm like trying to hit that button yeah. again. Yeah. And you're like, give me more, give me more. I wonder if that's the reason that generally we don't care that much about an angry heckler. It's like a non-laugher is a non-laugher. It doesn't matter how much of a non-laugher they are. Or if somebody gets mad about a tweet or something like that, you're like, I'm just concentrating on the, the ones that like me. The ones that don't, it's like, you're just actively not giving me feedback. Yeah, yeah that I want but it doesn't matter if you're like I hate you or just sit there stone faced it's the same like I'm not getting the yeah the thing well what I hate and I feel this from women a lot is I hate when people um act like dumb bitches <laughs> I hate the look we talked we just talked about this on lady journey a little bit but like a woman will give another woman a look who's performing like she's embarrassed that you're trying I'm wow. oh my god I'm so embarrassed for you and it's like you could even be doing good but it's like that look I find it so triggering wow. and I'm just like, ah! you know I'm <laughs> yeah. embarrassed for you wow it's like why are you even here why are you here it's like oh I get it because you're a blocked creative and you want to be doing this but for whatever reason you don't feel that you could do it so, so instead, you gotta tear somebody else down yeah you're reflecting it onto me it's like okay everything's a mirror everything's a mirror right right Wow. Well, your album, Feeling of Emptiness, is out right now. Yes. At, uh, Katie, I-E, Hannigan, H-A-N-N-I-G-A-N.com slash album. Yes. Um, dude, it's fucking, it legitimately, I'm excited for you. If you're her first album. It's, thank it's you. It's such a cool thing. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you for having me on your podcast. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I'll have you back here next time when I'm fucking barbecuing. Yes, totally. Um, We're neighbors. We are neighbors. I hope to have a bunch this year. As soon as it's about to get warm, so yeah. What are you? What are you going to barbecue? Like, oh, I love a fish. I'm a could I do that. I just got fish. one of those like slammers for fish, so you could like ugh, barbe- grill it. Yes, you know? yes, I love that. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's uh, settled. Yeah, it's settled. I mean, I'll, weekday barbecues are like my thing. Everyone oh, that's can do great. It. Comics are like, sure, whatever. Yeah. Oh, we'll be here. Okay. Yeah. In by eight, and then get ready to do your spots. Oh, perfect. I get so much sunlight. All right. Katie, great job. Where Thank can people you. find you online? Katie Hannigan? KatieHannigan.com and my Twitter is at Katie Hannigan. Please follow me. Great. Bandit, approve? Sweet. Aww. Um, Thanks, buddy. That was awesome. Um, yeah. And guys, for real, go check out the album right now. Uh, if you can afford it, buy it. If you can't afford it, give it a listen on Spotify and reach out to Katie and tell her uh, what you thought of it. Listen to it and then tell her like, hey, I heard your album. And I'd be like, hey, I have some notes. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what you can okay. change. <laughs> That's my favorite. People on a recorded thing. Here's what I thought you could do. I'm like, yeah, it's yeah. over. I'm like, okay, yeah. thank you. <laughs> I was already not going to listen, but now it's done. I got some thoughts from my new mentor, <laughs> yeah. Job. <laughs> Job876. Uh, all right, buddy. Thank you. Okay. This song is owned by Ari Shafir. This song is owned by Ari Shafir. This song is owned by Ari Shafir. All right, everybody. That's the episode. Not bad. Pretty funny. Uh, Thank you, Katie Hannigan. As I said before, uh, go out and listen to her album. Um, Let me see it. Feeling of Emptiness. It's on iTunes right now. You can get it on Spotify as well. But no matter how you listen to it, listen to it right now. Go ahead and get it right now. If you listen to this on Spotify, which it is, um, Immediately hit it and say, you know, press play and then get back to it next. You know, do added songs, like songs, and then go back to it later, listen to it, and then reach out to Katie, tell her your favorite bit. I'm telling you, the more you fucking respond to the guests on this podcast, the more they'll spread the word to everybody else. The word gets out. Oh my God, Ari Shafir Skeptic Tank gets me some fucking 
really good fans. Cypher Sound said he got a fan to see him in fucking Atlanta or something. I'm like, dude, we're selling tickets off this shit. Totally worth it. So thank you very much. You guys are great for that. Um, always. You've always been great for that. Um, I think that's it. Make sure to hit subscribe. Also, I have a Patreon. It's called patreon.com slash Ari Shafir. We do a few different types of podcasts on there. Uh, travel podcast, sex and Asian relationship advice, uh, general mailbag, uh, trouble with the law. I got to do a trouble with the law one. I haven't done that in a while. So go on there, patreon.com slash Ari Shafir for just five bucks a month. You can get three extra episodes a month, thereabouts. Um, and an occasional like stand-up clip of something real topical. All right. I think that's it. Thank you very much for tuning in. For Katie Hannigan. No, wait. This has been Ari Shafir Skeptic Tank, episode 468. Uh, guide me to hell. For Katie Hannigan, I'm Ari Shafir saying so long.